All right, happy people. I don't have my microphone on today just because it's uh, be too difficult having it around my uh, neck uh, area. So quality of video might suffer just a little bit. But here we are walking out today with Mac on my shoulder. I like to take him out uh, every couple of days. And, uh, and I'll go for a walk around the block. Uh, and I'm, usually I will take bring my dog because the dog just enjoys so much. That's the highlight of the day for my dog to go walk and uh, pee on everything and just get a really good uh, vibe out of that. So I just, you know, kill two birds with one stone, take the tegu out and uh, get some sun and some fresh air. And I just wanted to uh, talk to you. It was just, you know, blows my mind because if you've watched my past videos, I uh, took this guy, this black and white tegu that's going to be eight months in at the end of November, eight months old. And he's about 33 inches long. Let's see here, get his head. My camera has a gimbal in it. It does things opposite, opposite of what I want it to do. But yeah, so in past video, I took him out, put a little leash on him, those leashes you can find anywhere, you know, for lizards, and uh, put him on the ground. Now, combination of the leash, I'm sure he was not happy about the leash. It was very difficult to put him in that little leash and he fights uh, every minute that that's on him. So then putting him two on the ground, putting him down on the ground, and I'm not crawling in the grass with him. Um, so I'm, I'm standing, I'm towering above him, I'm six foot. And uh, that leash and me being, you know, six feet up above him just terrified him. And he went ballistic. And uh, we got very upset, death rolled, was hissing, striking, biting, bit me on the finger because I had to get him under control because he was spinning. And this, these lizards, if they get, get out of your control and they're off a leash and they're just running wild in the yard, they're gone. These things, these things, I've never seen this one uh, reach its top speed, thank goodness because that would be uh, mean that he's getting away. But if they got away from you outside and they had room to run, there's, you're not getting them back. And I mean, it's just unless you jump on them and risk ripping their tail off. But uh, as you can see, I'm just walking out sounds. He's in the daylight, the UVB. I mean, he's, uh, he's getting the full spectrum of light, so he's seeing everything you know that p potentially people say that uh you know he's seeing different things and he sees me in a different light so it freaks him out i guarantee if i put this guy on the ground uh it would be it'd be it'd be it'd be sad he'd be gone and uh and then if i cornered him he'd bite the shit out of me but he's on on me and he's doing very very well i grab him uh by the meat of his tail right here and from my experience, that uh, calms him down. I can pick him up, support, you know, around the front of his legs. And, uh, and as long as I'm kind of grabbing him behind his rear legs, um, I can feel him tense up, you know, if I'm not grabbing him by the tail. But when I uh, kind of firmly grab him uh, right behind the rear legs there, I can feel him loosen up. And it, you know, I, I think that gives him a little bit of security and uh, that's just how I grab mine and I kind of you know if I have to manhandle him that's where I'll kind of grab him and it'll settle him down but uh, I mean he'll move around on my neck car just drove by and it uh, makes a lot of noise tire noise but uh, he will sit on my shoulder and I'll try to walk in the Sun to give him that UVB these reptiles, even though we have the UV, UVB, uh, you know, lights on them, they're not going to duplicate uh, what the sun rays and, and uh, produce. 
So I think it's good if you're not keeping them outdoors in the sun uh, that you get them out maybe for an hour. I'm not walking for an hour, it's probably 20 minutes. But uh, walk around and get them some sun. Yeah, the car is probably looking at me walking with a lizard around my neck. <laughs> I take him sometimes to the to the pet store um, and when I buy pet supplies and uh, you know sometimes when I was buying uh, not rodents but buying crickets and stuff and the people just love him the people go crazy I did this yesterday um, and they people were super excited and taking pictures and he's he's a really good really good reptile just sits there and uh, hangs out on my shoulder like I said as long as I just got him grabbed by the tail so he doesn't uh, decide to uh, bolt off and get freaked out and, uh, and jump off my shoulder we're doing pretty good I have fun with him Mac is such a cool lizard the black and white tegu. The red tegu that I have, female, is a whole different story. But we're making progress with her. And so I'm going to get her out next and uh, go over some things for people that have been following me and following my journey with uh, owning these two tegus. And uh, we'll get on that right now. All right, back inside, we're going to get the red tegu out now. See my little heater going there and my whole bunch of water to keep the humidity up. And I got a humidifier, but I don't have enough outlets. And back behind there in the back is the BOA uh, enclosure. And it stays, you know, about 88 to about 95 degrees in this room, depending on how I have that heater set right there with a thermostat. But let's get the red tegu out. Um, she is... As you'll see in here, I've got a piece of bark that she can go under here. The black and white tegu ha hangs out here too, but he's bigger, so I take him out a lot during the day to entertain him. I mean, just think about having a small child in a small room and having one toy there, or not even a toy, but maybe, you know, a book or something, and just allowing them, you know, to entertain themselves it's just it's not I don't think it's healthy and you got to stimulate these animals and you can see in here I've got all kinds of you know different things and wood and different dirt and clay and coconut husk and rocks and things they can climb on and then I built this um, little hide right here and I added a little flap uh, to cut down on the light because they will sometimes just want to retire and, uh, and the light kind of keeps them uh, awake and kind of makes them, you know, restless. So the little red one is here, is in the little hide here that I just built out of uh, bricks. And I've got some uh, sphagnum moss, uh, Spanish moss, whatever, uh, in there. And I moisten that to keep her uh, hide a little more humid. But let me grab her. She's getting better at letting me pick her up she's not as fussy now I call this little girl I've changed her name let me get out of this little tight area hang on here there's Mac there's Mac right there he's just running around the room let me set the camera down real quick and turn on an extra light okay no way to bounce around let me see here here's my just limited on hands I have one hand holding the camera and one hand holding a lizard so she's being calm and this is not typically the way I hold her but as you can see her tail has gotten a lot better and um, she still doesn't like to be restrained she's just not a big fan of being picked up where Mac either maybe likes it or he just puts up with it that's the black and white tegu this one is not really cool with being picked up but she's allowing me to pick her up it's not fun for her at all she would rather just be a little bit more wild 
but um, she's doing well. I hope the camera's doing its job focusing. But I'm going to share with you about her tail, um, and you can still see some some pieces. And it's not uh, the perfect tail. Um, red tags, if you're not aware, are going to struggle uh, with shedding um, from what I've seen and what I've read and people that I've talked to, uh, breeders and online breeders and online YouTube posts and things like that. So it's a struggle, um, you know, and it has, I think, a lot to do with, uh, let me put her over here on top of this cage. It has a lot to do with all kinds of things, you know, uh, food intake. I mean, if you're just feeding your red tegu one or two food, uh, types of food, you're going to you're gonna struggle. Um, I think I've determined that for myself. If you're just feeding, um, you know, your, your red tegu is more picky. Mine is more picky. And let me just say her name. I've changed uh, her name to Sassy. Because, you know, um, I've encountered a few redheads in my, you know, my uh, 50 years. And they're all pretty sassy, pretty, uh, you know, quick-tempered. And I think that just fits this little red tegu so well. Sassy. She's very sassy. I looked it up, uh, the term sassy in it on the dictionary. And it just, man, it just spelled, spelled her out perfectly. So, sassy is her name. The black and white is scratching down there trying to get up to his box they love boxes the black and white tegu will just climb in a box and hang out in the box we'll watch real quick i'm not trying to get off the subject of the red tegu but the black and white loves boxes from the beginning when he was a little baby you know 12 13 inches long he loved boxes I could always find him. If I couldn't find him, I would look in all the boxes. He loves to go and explore boxes and scratch. Um, if there's a box in the room, he will go in and hang out in the box and go in and out of the box. So it's not that he's trying to find a place to hide. It's just he likes boxes. I think there's one Tegu online, uh, YouTube, that's kind of uh, popular that loves to bite shoes has a fascination about shoes well mine mine is boxes that's mac by the way mac the tegu but back to the red tegu let me see if i can turn a light on her and get a little bit better light um, but yeah you can see her tail like I said, it's not perfect, but I want to talk to you about uh, if you're having uh, tegu uh, shedding problems, it has to do a lot with diet. Uh, the temperature of your cage has to be pretty spot on, more with a red tegu than a black and white tegu from what I am experiencing. Uh, so we got food, humidity. Um, let's see, food, humidity, what else? Uh, you got to feed them a variety as much as you can. Um, I think it's best to start feeding them as, as much as you can mice, live mice, not frozen mice. I can tell a big difference between feeding them frozen mice and live mice um, that I have raised. Um, I can see their color be brighter if I feed them a live, a couple of live mice versus a frozen and then a thawed out mouse. Uh, so I think that's important and then you want to do your vitamin supplements uh, I got a zoo med vitamin supplement that has like 60 different vitamins in it uh, with d3 and I sprinkle that more on their food now a lot more now than I was doing and hopefully that's helping to do with a lot of her shed plus two if you're just feeding them a cat food dog food and a couple pieces of fruit that's not gonna cut it I feed this one um, you know, uh, fruit, mice, insects, she's going to go down, uh, insects, what else? I feed them, uh, a lot of different meat, uh, fish. I went to the Asian market in one of the last videos and I bought uh, little baby oysters. I bought some, some minnow type looking, you know, two to three inch minnow, uh, truly a fish 
and they with the, the little heads chopped off and they they love the fish i mean she will eat a a two inch three inch long minnow whatever kind of fish that is i can't remember, i didn't get i didn't record the name of the 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 breed of the fish but they will love they she'll eat like two pieces of that big fish i don't know how that goes into her belly and fits inside her belly but and uh feed them live kind of baby uh adolescent mice and then uh fruit and uh, chicken hearts chicken liver um all kinds of different meats and you want to give them oil so uh, fish oils is what uh, a breeder here in Plano, Texas told me at a big, big, really cool pet store. Um, prices are sky high, but you know, they are what they are. You know, people got to try to make money. But um, I've touched on the um, Shed Ease by Zilla and which works. It, you know, depending on your lizard, um, it helped some on the red tegu but didn't help really on the tail and uh, this is just this uh, product right here so what i was told and i thought but i didn't want to go out and buy just spend a lot of money on different vitamins the uh as you will see from a breeder here in texas um i'm not going to mention the name because they will not call me back they're they're crappy i'm trying to I've called just polite to tell them about their YouTube videos and how I like their YouTube videos. I've asked questions from YouTube and they were unresponsive. And I called and just uh, told them how much uh, joy I get from watching his videos. And the wife answered and takes the calls. And she said she would pass the message, message along to the owner that you know manages the reptiles. Never heard from him, so screw them. But he is knowledgeable and he recommended uh, vitamin B, super vitamin B complex. And I started feeding my lizards that and it might have helped, but it wasn't the fix all. Uh, I would say I would skip the vitamin, super vitamin B complex and go with uh, vitamin E, liquid vitamin E. Got this at a, a, a pretty high-end vitamin store this stuff isn't cheap this was like fifteen dollars for two ounces and it's straight vitamin e and it's maybe sunflower oil and some other things but uh, they have a consumer grade where you can eat it uh, and this was not the product this was just to put on the skin but they have the skin grade and the you know digestible type and uh, the digestible type was a little less expensive so i went with this that's pure for the skin and i just Take the dropper out. Um, don't be jumpy. She's looking that. And uh, I put the dropper out and I coat her tail with uh, the oil and just get it nice and coated on there, not dripping, just rub it in just a little bit. And uh, you gotta be careful because when you put oil-based uh, products on them, um, they cannot be in the sun or under the UVB light or your the bright uh, you know UVA light or heat lamps because the oil magnifies from what I understand and it makes sense magnifies the heat magnifies the UV ray, UVB rays and could cause them to get sunburned or, or damage their skin so you want to do this either at night or you want to turn off their lights um, you can, you know, run a little heater or, you know, try to keep their cage elevated to, you know, 80 degrees, but you've just got to be real careful that you're not exposing them to really bright light uh, when you put an oil-based, and this is oil-based uh, product on there. It's liquid like syrup. Um, but yeah, vitamin E, um, pretty good stuff, not from your generic, uh, just, you know, Kroger, but an actual vitamin store. Oh, there he goes. Uh, so we got the Zilla and the vitamin E and that's helping the vitamin E it doesn't it doesn't happen right away and it's not gorgeous and it doesn't peel off like a beautiful shed of a you know a well taken care of snake in one piece it comes off really really patchy and uh, it's it's pretty ugly but it's coming off now so uh, as you can see her tail as she's been growing her tail is a little bit more red than the rest of her body and she's gonna plop down or I'm gonna have to catch her she's gonna jump down she wants down 
But she lets me pick her up, and she's really full. And she doesn't bite me typically. She nipped me in one video when she wanted to get down and she reached around and just, just gave me a nip and I jumped and I let her down and immediately she went poop on the floor. So was she trying to tell me that she needed to get down so she wouldn't poop on me? Possibly. But uh, that's the only time she's not a biter. But she just doesn't like to be picked up. But that's the Red Tegu. Video's long enough. Um, I can make so much content. These guys are so freaking cool. See, he just sits in his box. There's the black and white taken. He's silly. Mac, come on out, Mac. I fed him already. Baby clams, chicken hearts, chicken livers. And, uh, and they ate. I didn't give them a ton, but their bellies are full. They didn't eat fish today. But uh, that's everything. So hopefully people are getting stuff from my videos. I'm learning as we go. I'm not a professional. Um, I'm not a herpetologist. I didn't go to school to study reptiles. But I have over, let's say, a strong 40 years of trial and error and experience raising reptiles. And so there's a lot for doing it on the go. Uh, learning as you go and experimenting and learning and I haven't killed any of my reptiles so everything is going well but yeah that's it I appreciate you watching if you have any questions um, feel free to hit me up and I will try to share what I know or what I've learned or you can tell me what you know and you have learned and um, we can just have a little community all right thank you have a good day bye bye Sassy. Very unique. How she walks, how she acts, her nails, how she looks, how she backs up. This lizard is the backup queen. Um, if she's in a tight area or somewhere she doesn't want to be, she goes in reverse. The black and white tegu doesn't do that. Two totally different personalities. But, you know, it makes sense. She just wants to roam free and do her own thing. She's, I think, probably about, you know, maybe 19 inches uh, now. But that's it.